Well, we look to bring you more reports in the news during the course of our discussion with our in-house analyst who uh, is joining us in a short while to discuss some of these uh, national issues of uh, interest. Now, we are currently uh, being joined by Paris Barrister Peterson Iwenze, who is a regular on the program, uh, a social affairs commentator and a passionate Nigerian who you know, hopes to lend his voice to some of these uh, developing issues, especially that of the n new fuel pump price hike where the Nigeria Labour Congress has held a meeting with the federal government. And of course, the members of the House of Representatives are also intervening, asking the federal government to rethink its decisions on things like fuel, cooking gas, and other commodities that Nigerians continue to grapple with every day in order to purchase. Well, Thank you very much. Welcome to the studio. It's a pleasure. It's wonderful here. to have you here again. Thank you very much. I'm happy. Very quickly, let's uh, delve into matters. We just have about uh, 40, 45 minutes to have this discussion. It's and I believe as I was reading out the headline stories, you have a lot on your mind. V very well, very well. Well, well, well I'm, I'm glad you do. Let's uh, start off with the first item on the list, the petrol price hike. Okay. It is the third time in, three, in two months that Nigerians have seen a continuous increase in petrol pump price hike and now the labor congress has held a meeting with the federal government which reports say was met with a deadlock how would you react to this development where everybody is just uh, on their toes what is fight or possible that we find ourselves in this situation which i could vividly recall in 2012 where the our president uh, then he, they were in the opposition and they led the protest against the government of good luck Jonathan saying that uh, he can't remove subsidy you know and saying all that thing that uh, ought to be done but thank god you know that this why i say in our day that says that uh, big mouth will reach everybody a, a, a pig was you know the baby was asking the mom mom why is your mouth big like he said calm down the time will come where your own mouth will be big too <laughs> so it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a funny situation the increase continuous increase in energy even in u.s energy is subsidized yes you know so it's unfortunate that government continues to increase uh, the, the energy and all that in 2012 we saw social investment program of the government we saw the buses and other things that are you know working cushioning the effect of uh, the uh, removal of uh, partial removal of the uh, subsidy yes. but now we have total removal of subsidy after one year getting to two years of this administration a common man has never seen a single social investment that aid or help or assist the person to say that I'm in Nigeria, this is what I'm benefiting, this is what I'm benefiting from the government, either by way of public transportation or every or any other thing that government or incentive that government can come up with. But it's so fortunate that the government of the day has never done anything. The way system, I don't know the position now. Public transportation, I don't know, no, it's at uh, lowest uh, there, there is no any public transportation system currently going on in Abuja now. And people are beginning to, you know, grumble with the excruciating economic uh, you know policies of the government okay the civil servants are starting to come into work two days in a week three uh, days in a week that's a reduction in productivity exactly. yeah, so at the end of the it will affect our gross domestic uh, uh, product yes. and uh, growth yes. so you see that uh, well the, I don't know the, poli the direction or policy direction of this government well, well, talking about some sort of uh, subsidy for Nigerians, especially in terms of public transportation, it is true that in Abuja currently, there is very little to nothing being done by perhaps the FCTA, which is uh, the, the organization in charge of uh, the administration in, in, in Abuja, towards curtailing that loophole or filling up that loophole. However, in places like Lagos, we saw recently where Governor Babajide Songolu uh, you know, commissioned the Lagos Red 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 Line Rail, where he also, you know, trans took part of uh, uh, the trip together with some members of the House of Assembly in Lagos. Do you think that perhaps other state governors emulating uh, this sort of action by the Lagos state governor will help reduce the load on the back of the federal government that everybody looks up to? Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, you know, my friend will always say that Lagos is. Uh, 
15 years ahead of other states. And uh, even in the uh, uh, legal uh, uh, world in Nigeria, federal high court copies Lagos State High Court. Okay, the innovation and all that. So the Lagos State government, in fact, this morning I watched uh, uh, his uh, 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 interview yesterday, wherein he said that minimum wage in Lagos, we have discussed with the government, is now 85,000 naira. So how can federal government be offering 75? Why Lagos State government is offering 85? And, and mind you, they, they <laughs> gave a projection that by January 2025, they hope to... Take it up to 100,000. That is what we are talking about. In fact, I was asking myself, my staff, that what can I be? In fact, I pay above, in fact, uh, if not double or triple of the minimum wage. I was saying, now, what can this thing do? What are the incentives? What are the gain? What are the, you know, what are the things that will make? Because a, a hungry man is an angry man. You can't expect somebody that doesn't have, you know, a, a money does not that don't have food, the wife is giving him pressure in the house and all that. You know, the children are clamoring for school fees and all you expect the person to perform or you know put in his best in the government. In fact, yesterday somebody called me, told me that this government work is not working. What can we do? Are we to resign and go back to the business or what? So the government has not even come up. If it, 2012 era is better than now because the as far as i'm concerned i have never seen any vehicle bought by this current administration to cushion the effect of the high cost of of transportation in abuja now in fact when i was coming i have to give a lift to one guy he told me that he parked his car two days ago i bought fuel of forty thousand naira and now the fuel has finished. So what are we talking about many people have have uh, cried out severally that since the new Four pound price came out a little over 1,000 naira. That then it now costs them almost a hundred thousand naira weekly to be able to fuel their car and move around. It is the reality of many Nigerians. So, one full tank is far above the stipulated uh, minimum wage in the country. And civil servants are expected to drive themselves to work. <laughs> what what is the way out of this? Because it, it appears that uh, the more you you look, the less you see. Yes, you, you, our official price and NPC is one thousand thirty naira. Yes. Then um, other independent station, marketers market market are now selling one hundred, one thousand one hundred, one thousand one twenty and all that, one thousand two hundred and all that. So now my car takes seventy five liters. Exactly. So 75 liters go with government if you go and queue in the filling station and waste another man hour, like 34 hours, say you want to queue to you know buy from government, it will cost you like 80 something thousand. Yes. That 80 something thousand will not take you up to five days, four days. You understand? You take four days and uh, <laughs> you continue to buy it. So it's crazy, and man. You have to because you it, need to go. You need to move around. You, need to, you, to need, you need to move around. You need to go to work, and you can't stay around. But it's quite fight of unfortunate that the government has not. Because if we have efficient transport system, there's no point driving around. You go to from Kubwa, you enter train station, you come to town. Um, you you know take a public bus and all that. Go to this one. Be going to Area One. This one we're going to Wuse. This one we're going to Bega. You know that kind of you know a, a movement. But I saw uh, 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 before now Minister of FCT saying uh, co commissioning the uh, 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 terminal and the uh, bus stop and all that. These are how things should be done. Because uh, as far as I'm concerned, the cost of production or services has gone over 1,000 percent high. So what is government doing to reduce the cost of this, uh, 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 the cost of uh, uh, rendering goods and services in this uh, city? It still four bags on the reduction on the energy. If not, uh, we will continue to grapple with it. Now, now in a very worrying situation, uh, Barrister Peterson, mm. uh, the World Bank has revealed that the growing inflation in Nigeria Right? No, sorry, the, the petrol pump price hike that continues to change would sort of worsen the inflation in the country. Now, mind you, last week, sometime last week or early this week, the CBN governor revealed that inflation had, you know, shot up again by about, uh, now pegged at 34.7% thereabouts. With this new development, especially coming in from the CBN, Nigeria's Apex Bank, and a projection, a warning projection by the World Bank. 
How do you think that stakeholders involved in decision making, especially with regards to our economy, will take adequate steps in order to firstly stop the continuous increase in 12 pound price hike and then deal with the issue of inflation? Well, uh, like I am of the opinion that government should uh, well, do all that is necessary and needed to reactivate our rail system. Yes. Because the fulcrum of uh, every um, uh, uh, services or goods that are talking about, we're talking about movement here and there. Is it produce production in the in the rural area or in the place of production, the factory, taking it to the where it's needed, the consumption uh, area is. The government should look at it. In fact, you made mention of Lagos State. There is also what I want to add. It goes beyond, you know, Lagos State or individual governors to, you know, take a cue and do that. I'm looking at a situation whereby the south, the southeast governors, south south governors, uh, south west governors, north central governors, North East and North West, they will come together. Regions will have real, you know, networking. This thing will go from one uh, state capital to another state, to major cities, cities in Nigeria. Look at, if you apply our federal rules, you see all manner of train, all manner of tank carrying everything. Uh, the government will fix the road. In less than two, two months, it will get bad. What happened? What is the railway system? Uh, last two months, I traveled from Etakbe to Ibanke in Edo. The rail line goes down to Agua, you know. I said, this is wonderful. What stopped the government? It was, uh, they say it's good luck, Jonathan, that stopped it there. I was even wondering, why would good luck, Jonathan, take beautiful something like that from Wari down to Takme, Kogi State? Why not push this thing to Abuja? Because actually, if that uh, system is working, somebody can even live in, in, in Agua or Ibanke or any place in Edo State and be working in Abuja. Yes. On, base, on special arrangement. Exactly. Then where there are sports, sport and where there are this, there will be double guards so that this one will be going, this one will come in. I could remember when Abuja uh, 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 Kaduna Rail was working. He used to go like four times in a day. In the morning, this one will leave Kaduna, this one will leave Abuja. At a place, they will meet and swap. You know, this one will move, this one will move. As this one is reaching Abuja, he leave by eight, reaching Abuja. By ten, it will be going back again. The one who carry Kaduna will come back again. So these are how things are worked in the same uh, a, a client. But uh, during the past administration, nothing was done in the railway system. What they did was just to assist to commission 95% uh, railway, uh, Abuja railway, uh, Kaduna railway program that was done by Jonathan. Then this government, uh, they say, I, I heard that government will you know, extend that of attack to Abuja, yes. but up to now, nothing has happened. So I don't know, I don't, I know who the policy, you know, of this government the economic policy, the objective of the government. Because we have removed fair subsidy for over one year. Well, the only thing that we heard that there is increase in revenue, there is increase in this, there is increase. But there is no increase. Somebody said there is increase in the cost of living, but there is no increase in quality of, of, of living. living in Nigeria. So government has never done anything as far well as I'm concerned in terms of social investment program. Let there be rain, rain from Lagos down to Abuja, down to uh, Kaduna, Sokoto, you know. They will bring owners from that place down to Lagos, down to Abuja. They will also let there be also Eastern Bypass from Patakote, Enugu, you know, uh, Benue, Makode, and all that. Things will, uh, will be better. And until Nigeria has a functional and a well, you know, a, a, a functioning runway system, the cost of living, the inflation will continue to rise. Well, there have been speculations, especially from the quarters of the members of the House of Representatives, who have warned the possibility of an unrest mm. due to the deadlocked meeting between the NLC and the federal government. Now, NLC has always been known to be very vocal, especially with social issues that affect the common man in Nigeria. But uh, lately, we haven't seen them protesting in any way. What uh, sort of unrest do you think perhaps the members of the House of Representatives are referring to when they give out this warning? Well, the, 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 when you are talking about NLC, NLC, you say talk about the common man. I don't know. The only thing that we hear over the news is increment in uh, uh, this in salaries and uh, wages and all that. Then I now ask how many Nigerians are employed by the federal government? I don't even understand. That's a so, good question. Yes, they are just talking about their own as far as I'm concerned. Because there, there should have been a demand for functional railway system. 
That's the reason of going to going on strike. But their own is going on strike for the increment in their salary, the entitlement. What of ordinary man? What of the majority of Nigerians that are not working with government, that are working in the private sector? Have there been any time that NLC go on strike for the increment of the workers? Who are, not, who are in private sector. Well, 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 well I believe TUC uh, sort of takes care of what concerns the private trade sector, union. the trade union congress. Yes, I, 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 what I'm just saying is, you know, you mentioned NLC, NLC. and also mentioned unrest. Yes. I'm not trying to link it to their effect yes. on the generality of the population. You understand? Oh. Because if you are talking about unrest, a subject to the activities of NLC, you're talking about they are also influence on the public. Do they have influence on the common man? And lots of and people are beginning to, to d diminish their thrust for the NLC. So that is it. Moment. Do they have influence? What I'm just saying is that if they want to, you know, uh, uh, go for common man, they will tell government that we are going on strike next week, oh, not for our salary, but let there be a functional railway system. Let government make a, a policy statement. Let there be public transportation. Let there be health insurance for every Nigerian that is zero to ten years. Let him go to public hospital and assess medication without free, without payment. Let Nigerians sixty years and above assess free Medicare. So when NLC come up with such policy, we know that they are talking for the common man. Someone that is talking about increment is on this thing doesn't even just like you rightly say the NLC doesn't even uh, include all the workers in Nigeria. There are people that are in threat. That point private sector who is even advocating for them. So what I'm saying is that let us have a broader view and broader perspective of all these things. Because at the end of the day, just like I was telling some, even if they pay you the minimum wage is two hundred thousand, can it even be enough for the one a month? It cannot be enough to live a decent life. It well, cannot be well, enough. Well, many people have also argued um, that the whole concept of CNG. Uh, conversion in the country brought about by the federal government uh, was a policy that was just rolled out without proper planning on how to implement them because there have been reports of people wanting to convert their vehicles from petrol to CNG and then the cost alone is another back-breaking uh, amount uh, that a lot of them cannot even afford that is one on the side and secondly the queue when it comes to the conversion People are asked to, to wait for up to three weeks, four weeks, or even more. And even at the, at, at the end of those three, four weeks, they still don't get to, you know, be in line or be next in line for their vehicles to be converted. Do you think that uh, maybe, just maybe, the CNG uh, project wasn't really thought through by the federal government? Well, I, I must uh, commend, commend the federal government for such a move. But they say when good cannot satisfy demand, perfect is required. The government coming up with that policy, uh, now they said uh, the cost of my preliminary investigation revealed that the cost of conversion is 1.5 million. Just to convert your They said the commercial uh, uh, user is over. But if you have evidence of, you know, that your car is a commercial uh, vehicle, you can convert at 50% of such cost. Yes. Now, a civil servant that you're paying 70,000 naira minimum wage, how many years will it take him to raise seven, seven, uh, Not It's not even among of the people that this thing is subsidized. So he should pay 1.5 million. So salary, let's project it. Then another thing is that how many, apart from uh, uh, payment of house rent, transportation, feeding, the family himself, lightening, the skyrocketing, uh, 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 electricity, electricity tariff. tariff and all that. So now, how many years will it take a citizen that is not corrupt, that doesn't take, uh, uh, you know, circumvent the government procedures and the protocol to get such money to convert a, a car that he bought on that loan that is scrabbling to, you know, de defray the loan and you are still bringing out a policy that government, if you say that Nigeria is rich, why not bring down this cost? These are subsidies that we are talking about. What you want to subsidize, subsidize and let it be sensible and let it have human feeling and human face. Everything is not government. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, this government is all about collecting tax, increasing this one, increasing this one. Any little thing that will go to the people, they will now skyrocket the price to the 
common above the common reach of the of the common man. Then we are talking about transfer. What are those that are working in the government? You say you are subsidizing so for commercial users. If you want to do something, let it go around. If you, what are people that are in private sector that are using? You know, are we not contributing? I'm a legal practitioner. Am I not contributing to the CGP? Am I not contributing to the growth of the economy? So what have, what effect do I have? You are increasing the fuel pump price. You are increasing tariff, electricity tariff. All other manner of tax are being increased, stamp duty and all that. So what am I benefiting from the government? So well, it's, it's well, crazy. Well, well I, I, there is a report here on the Nation newspaper where the Fed say, it says that the federal government is offering about 10 billion naira CAM loan for the purpose of facilitating CNG conversion. Now, we'll take a look at uh, the Nation newspaper together and have a brief overview of the headline story captured on the front page. On the Nation, federal government offers 10 billion Naira CAM loan to facilitate CNG conversion. Plan captures credit for alternative energy and 30,000 or 3,000 CNG tricycles begin operation in Lagos. Emo government unveils 5 million Naira or 5 million cubic feet gas project. Uh, these are quite um, interesting takes. Again, Lagos taking the lead with about 3,000 CNG tricycles operating in the state. It's, it's the first time. In fact, most people did not even know that tricycles could be converted to CNG. It has always been about cars and buses. Yes, it's a welcome development. You know, I told you that Lagos, my friend, Oji, will always say that Lagos is 50 years ahead of other states. Yes. You see what we're talking about. The government has invested in the project to ensure that the project thrives, yes. to ensure that the project takes uh, this state. Not that we are saying the government should involve in the production of goods and services, economic plans, but government can come in and subsidize and give, take a lead. What are you having this money for? What are we even talking about? The essence of the government is for the security and welfare. When you talk about security, protection of life and property, then welfare, how do you, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, come out with policies and programs that will, you know, be to the welfare and the benefit of the citizen. Yes. The government, you know, having the capacity, having the goodwill, and also having the equity, even to source for loan and also go for this project, you can give it and amortize it, give people loan, amortize it for over a period of time. He said, welcome to I'm also calling other, other stakeholders, other governors to take a cue. We are talking about inflation now. Now, with that project with that you know uh, transportation system that we have in lagos do you think that inflation will we have uh, effect as it is in other states in lagos the answer is a negative so government should invest in critical sector energy renewable energy that's where we are going to thank god for this cng yes. so if it can go around in fact i was telling my friend that i need to get a new car and convert it you are telling me that with 3,000, I can drive from Abuja to Enugu. So with 3,000, yes, 3, CNG, CNG, yes. He's saying, my friend told me that. So it's a welcome development. So government should do something that, even with that in Nigeria, we, on, we, we beat our chest and say, thank God that we did not jack back. Because this thing is not working. There are no incentive, no social program, no social investment. Ordinarily, in a clean and a sane uh, society, there should be health insurance. Yeah. You mustn't work with government for you to have access or corporate organizations for you to have access to health insurance. It should go around. Uh, uh, child bed should be free. Some of the of the, of the regular and common uh, illnesses or sicknesses, the drug should be provided by the government or highly subsidized. So these are where government can come in. Not all about building roads. How many people have uh, traveled? For as far as I'm concerned, this year I've not gone anywhere. I've been in Abuja. Okay. So government should come up with other programs that will, you know, that will cushion the effect of the of the economy. So that someone that has five children, you can access the government facility or healthcare without paying more. Then other incentives can come up. Oh, all right, Barrister, you have uh, beautifully put it out there. Uh, certainly, the federal government, all governments at the state level, should ensure that their policies rolled out are for the good of the common man and for the economy to sort of light in a way that people can afford the basic needs of life in terms of transportation food 
security, uh, electricity, as well as water. Now, moving away from uh, stories uh, surrounding CNG conversion kits in the country, surrounding the petrol pump price hike, and LC and the federal government, and a very sad and tragic incident in Jigawa State, a, tanko, a tankai inferno has left over 150 people dead, with about 70 people treating their wounds in hospitals. Now, uh, stakeholders across the country, including the president, President Bola Metinubu, have all sent out their condolences to the people, the government and people of Jigawa State. Earlier, I brought you a story on the Daily Trust newspaper. But uh, let's pick up the Daily Independent and have a brief overview of it before we come back and have uh, Barrister Peterson's take on this uh, sad development. Now, on the Daily Independent newspaper, you'd find Jigawa Tanker Accident, Federal Government to Review Fuel Transportation Safety Protocols Across States. 140 killed in Jigawa Tanker Explosion get mass burial. Tinubu Dispatches Delegation Directs Emergency Aid. NMDPRA Probes Incident. Shetima, Abbas, Lopebri, First Lady, and others mourn well barista it's uh indeed a sad development for the jigawa state people that uh this huge tragedy has befallen them uh, my condolence goes to the good people of uh, jigawa state we pray that such will not happen again and may the source of the departed find peace in the bosom of our Lord. Amen. Um, uh, then, uh, just like uh, they uh, uh, said, the government to review uh, the processes uh, of uh, uh, fuel transportation and all that. Uh, you, you know, this, these are what we are talking about. If there is efficient rail system, why will you be carrying trucks around, destroying the road, the cost, antecedent, and all that? So, government should review. Let's depot be built in strategic uh, places so that people can there won't be long distance uh, distance you know transportation of carrying you know, holding the product from east to west and all that then uh, um, let there be also sp safety measures in all the depots that they lift all these uh, products and if it means training and retraining or reissuance of licenses so that such uh, uh, bad incident will never occur again. My heart goes out to them. Then another uh, issue is um, the state government should, uh, through the security agencies, to do more. Uh, there was an incident, the, one of the reports said they were scooping the petrol. Fuel. Yeah. You know, is is a, is a bad one. And that was why we uh, see such number of persons that had such uh, a casualty, you know, to be this. When such a thing happened, there should be a state emergency agency, just like we have NEMA at the federal level, states should repeat such agency at the state level, even civil defense. I think that's part of their duties to ensure that such uh, civil uh, issues are being sorted out. And also, they are also in charge of pipeline and uh, other petroleum, government critical infrastructures. So when such a thing happens, let the government, even the police, all the security agencies should, when they road safety, is part of their duty whenever such a thing to they should cut down of the area, even fire service, and ensure that you know there won't be such a uh, thing. And also to train the, the flow of the fuel and see how such can be contained. Contained. I saw one, there was one that happened in a uh, uh, Kubu Express here yeah, some time ago, last two years, and they were a manner that they came, my manager, uh, name and all that came and cut down of the whole thing, you know, use another tank to you know, and all that. To scoop the one that is remaining and all that before yes. you know what is happening, everything cordon off the vehicle too because some of the you know uh, vehicles that are plying the road, some of them are not uh, roadworthy. You know anything that will cause light or bring a spark of light within the area be cordon off so that the issues uh, that can be taken care of. Well, well barrister, in as much as we the calls are being made to the state emergency management agency uh, to swing into action immediately an incident like this occurs, I believe people also have the responsibility to have common sense to know that uh, you don't go about playing around full, especially 
when uh, a tanker falls, there's the, the possibility of an explosion. It is not the first time, it is not the second time it's happening in the country. It's a reoccurrence. Do people ever learn? Well, if, if uh, in that regard, people should uh, be uh, uh, taking precaution and be cautious of their life. But people are hungry. You don't, they are not blame them to an extent because uh, a hungry man is an angry man. And uh, uh, someone that has been hungry has never seen a means of uh, projecting his life and he sees free money, free food. And you tell the person not to. The person will tell you that it's better he died there than to <laughs> die of hunger. Now this is up an opportunity. But in everything, let the, the dominate, common denominator there, let it be, you know, safety first. Safety and that's first. why I'm saying that, you know, in some of these things, you need government, you know, to agencies to come up and start, you know, uh, policing people to cordon off the whole area. Because if the uh, state management agency, emergency management agency are there, they would have cordoned off the whole, whole place. Yes. They would have allowed people. If police are there, they would have, you know, Take precaution, uh, precaution and take precaution, me, 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 precautionary measures, and the road safety and all the uh, fire service and all that. Because I'm, I'm also of the view that if there is a functional state of fire service uh, agency that is around, the casualty wouldn't have been up to this magnitude that we are seeing. And we are talking about 150 something souls. These are productive, you know, uh, 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 ages. Uh, uh, is uh, mostly uh, young people, I believe. Yes, that's productive age. There is no old person. Or a young person that has that will go there, that is below below ten years or about that. The majority will be from let's say fifteen or that about to thirty to forty and all. These are production and productive age. But uh, God will help help us in this country. Let government do more in respect of making people to be comfortable, uh, making people to be you know uh, uh, okay. Because when when you don't have the means of living, you won't have you know value for the life okay when there is quality yeah. life yes you have value for it but when there is nothing as you are not living for anything people say, just think time. anything so I mean, they, they can die for life to live for any, anyway they can die for anything so that's this this well well our deepest condolences to the people of Jigawa our state heart goes out uh, our heart goes out to them and uh but People watching us right now should also do take note that uh, in cases where incidents like this occur, the first point of call should be safety. Ensure that uh, you take cover first and allow the professionals to handle such incidents. There is no amount of fuel, there is no amount of uh, commodity that is worth a human life. Now that uh, being said, let's... Uh, Move over to just one more story in the news, where analysts say that opposition parties in the country are in disarray as internal crises continue to rock them. Now, the People's Democratic Party, the Labour Party, as well as the NNPP all have internal crises. Let's pick up the Guardian newspaper as our last paper on this uh, review segment and have a look at what the headline story there looks like. Opposition in disarray as internal crisis, Bata PDP, Labour Party, as well as NNPP. Now, this uh, story is followed uh, with a picture of uh, President Bola Amitinubu, as well as former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, uh, Labour Party, uh, Labour Party's Peter Obi, and NNPP's uh, Kwankoso, as well as the FCT Minister Barista Yersen Wike, who has been a key figure in the internal crisis in the PDP. Uh, on the rider, you'd find... Revert to old price, revert to old petrol price, reps tell presidency. You need consistent policies to attract foreign capital, JP Morgan tells Nigeria. And Senate probes impeachment rumor as presidency declares no leadership vacuum. Now these are the stories on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. Barrister, we have just two minutes to get your reaction to this. Do you think that perhaps the internal crisis working all these opposition parties in the country against the People's Democratic, the, against the APC, could have somewhat been internally planted by the ruling party. Well, I because uh, <laughs> it's it's no coincidence that all three opposition parties are currently facing crisis. Yeah, well, uh, it's neither here or there because uh, somebody is saying that uh, I could I was watching uh, the opposition spokesperson Ugo Chinyere. Yes, the, he was saying that. Uh, APC has a hand in it uh, through the Minister of FCT and all that. 
So me, my own take, I, I, in as much as I'm a Nigerian and uh, everything is possible in this country, uh, it's only a fool that will allow him, so an enemy to destroy him, his house. So assuming without considering that APC has a hand in putting crisis in APC and, PD, and uh, um, in PDP and the Labour Party and all that, uh, they would they allow APC to, you know, have their way. They should also have common sense and come together and also fight. That was what uh, APC did yes. against PDP. Yes. Uh, does it mean that PDP does not have mechanism to put crisis in them prior to 2015? But they refuse. So if you allow your enemy to use you, you know, um, you have yourself to blame at the end of, at the end of the day. It is a call for the opposition to come together whether coming together individually or as a group and you know give a very strong and viable opposition to the APC so that there will be checks and balance so that they will also know that Nigerians have alternative and Nigerians on the other hand should also ensure that uh, when you vote and ensure that the vote count uh, we can't be a one party system the APC uh, they, they are doing their own but also if there is an opportunity to have an alternative we should not uh, gamble with it. Nigeria should stand and ensure that uh, proper thing is done. And APC, if they have also hand in uh, putting crisis, well, I strongly believe it, that whatever you give to the society is what society will give to you. So they too will also have their own uh, 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 pound of the flesh.